and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined by Keith Corcoran from Command the Hoop Celtic YouTube channel. Make sure you go over and check it out and also check out their Instagram, which is, um, what's it at now? It's at um, nearly 29,000. 29,000, so check them out. Keith's, uh, Keith's from Dublin, Bally Moon, if you, if you must know. Um, but yeah, we're here to do a match preview for the Gibraltar game. Uh, so Keith's uh, joined me, uh, kindly joined me to discuss uh, Gibraltar, but from an Ireland standpoint, it's Mick's first game. Mix had three, no, yeah, three training sessions now with the squad. Um, seems to be really getting to know the squad now. I've been down at, the, at Abbottstown twice um, in the last two days, and it just seems to be a, a nice buzz around the place. The press conferences, the, the lads are smiling, laughing, you know, um, just just confidence. There's confidence around the place, and even though we're kind of missing, we're, sh we're missing a few players and Shane Long, Curtis, Adam Brown. There's still confidence for these two games. And I think Mix Aura and just Mix personality. I think he's rubbing off, and the fact that Robbie's in there as well. How are you feeling coming into this? Quite excited. I think it's it's a new fresh start. It's new players coming in. As I said, it's going to be a new campaign. Relax mode to it. But it'll be all knuckled to heads on obviously on Friday when they start training off in Gibraltar, ready for the game on Saturday. Yeah. Um from from an Irish uh, perspective, we obviously have been known to not in the last year anyway, score goals. What uh, what are your thoughts on kind of how we should go about them? I mean, if you're looking at them, you know, their results read as, you know, a two 0 defeat to Macedonia, a two 0 defeat to Liechtenstein. A one nil away, or sorry, one yeah, a one a one nil win anyway against Armenia, but in that game they they were fight, faced against thirty five shots, they had six shots, they scored one, and Armenia had seventy eight possession. Now Henrik Mkhitaryan started that game, I he he, he would have been a, an Arsenal player, but then but then they go and played Armenia uh, away. Lost six two, or sorry, at home they played Armenia at home. Lost six two, and then they played Macedonia, which we will come to in a couple of minutes. They beat Macedonia four 0 Now obviously, uh, everyone remembers uh, the Macedonia game, and everyone when the uh, I had a Macedonia T-shirt when Mick was last in charge, which he wasn't best pleased with when quizzed about on his uh, press conference there the other day on on Monday, I think it was, which I don't blame him for. But anyway. From an Irish perspective, we have Shawnee McGuire uh, doing quite well for Preston. We have David McGoldrick doing quite well for Sheffield United. James Collins doing quite well for Luton. And Aidan O'Brien just got called in there after scoring on Sunday. And he replaced Shane Long, essentially. So, we do have our, our strikers are scoring goals, which is good. From a wide standpoint... I can't see Seamus and Matt both not playing, and Matt having played under Mick is a is is a, a, a he'd be one of his favourites, I imagine, because he's played under him, so he knows what he's going to get from Darty. And B, Darty knows what he'll get from Mick, and you know they've all came out and said that you know if you if, if you train well, Mick Mick will do right by you if you do right by him. So. What I'm kind of looking at is uh, if you're looking at the wings, uh, wing back or. The wings. So I imagine he's going to set up with two banks of four anyway. Whatever way he works, either a one behind a striker or two up there. I'm not sure, but I I think, and you can check that out in their start eleven show what the actual you know lineup will be. But from 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 the outside looking in, and my ideal preference would be to have Stevens a left back, Brady at left wing, uh, Darty right wing, and Seamus a right back because to me that shows a lot of attacking intent. We need to beat these, you know. And um, you know, going out there and playing a, a sitting midfielder in there—it's just not going to work. We need we we always set up defensive, but for this game, we need to set up attacking. Well, I think basically, we, it, Brady has played left back before for Ireland previous times in the last campaign. With regards to Doherty, like Doherty's on good form at the moment for his club with Wolves, so recommend playing playing right playing right wing. Play Coleman right back. As I said, it's going to be a free-flowing game. I'd say definitely from the winger's perspective, we have the pace to beat Gibraltar because the majority of the Gibraltar players are part-time players. And obviously, we have professional footballers playing the English Premier League, Championship and League One. So 
fitness wise we should beat them on the wings 100% well, I think that's where you know I think that's where we have to beat them I think that's where our best uh, players lie and you know I, I, and it's, a, it's an opportunity for someone like a Sean McGuire, Shawnee McGuire to this is his chance to, to, to get the jersey you know this, this yeah, is a chance if you want that number 9 jersey now is it now is your chance to grab Shane Long's out of the game probably would have started because he's the mo- he's playing at the highest level and he's got the most experience so he probably would have been a starter but then to be the other player beside him but this is the chance for actually for, for, for any of those four to come in to Collins O'Brien uh, Maguire and McGoldrick it's, 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 it's for them to come in and say right well I'm going to play well for this game because I want the shirt now judging by what speaking, to hear him speak today which you can see here. Johnny, in terms of goals, obviously there's, uh, I suppose, a lack of caps maybe in the strikers that are in the squad at the moment. So is this a chance for you to, to step up and, and, and get in that team and, and score a few goals the weekend? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for the, you know, the strikers in this camp. Um, as you said, there's not many caps between the, you know, the four of us. Um, I think Aidan is coming in now and he's probably the only striker that scored a goal. So the opportunity arises. Um, I relish it and... You know, it's obviously a great couple of games to come into. Um, by no means we we should we should uh, underestimate. You know, Gibraltar. I think they won their first game last year in the last compa- campaign. So um, we'll be look fully focused to you know start the campaign um, with three points. You would have watched Ireland as a fan and watched Robbie Keane. I'm sure supported him when you were younger. What's it like now that you're watching or you're being coached by him now from the sidelines as part of mixed team? And the responsibility of qualifying is is on your shoulders as a player now. How does that feel? Yeah, it's um, it's an amazing feeling. You know, it was my first time meeting Robbie coming in Sunday, um, and even chatting to him, he brings that all about all about him, um, and you want to learn from him straight away. Even in the space of the last couple of days, him giving you tips here and there, um, it's just great to see. It's great to see. Just great to be involved. Of you know, player feels. Uh, Stature, and um, I've no doubt that you know, even in the space of these ten days, being involved with Robbie, that will probably go st- come from strength to strength, and hopefully, you know, kick on as a player because you know he's a player where you want to look up to everything what you want to be. Um, I think his goals speak for himself. Sixty-eight goals for Ireland, um, and hopefully, you know, these next couple of games, hopefully, I can kick st- kick on my my international career. Uh, as you can see there, Sean McGuire, quite feeling quite confident. Um, what are your thoughts on Sean McGuire? I think he's quite good. He's played well for Preston since he took the move from um, Dundalk. He's been very good. I'd like to see him obviously get the number nine short, make a stamping point. When Shane when Shane Long is fit, it means they'll have healthy competition, even with McGoldrick there as well, and Brian. Yeah, well, I don't I don't see it as being a you know an issue for for playing two of them. Like I, I'd be quite happy in there. Like, but some people were calling for Jack Brown maybe playing in the hole and behind. I just think it's a little bit soon for that. I mean, I'd love to see it for four and a loop or something like that. I mean, Jack Brown comes off the bench. I think that would be a huge statement for the league and a huge statement for himself. He's buzzing around the place today with Maguire. He seems to be quite close with Maguire. That might be a thing they might look at as linking those two up as well. So just Bowen's on quite good form at the moment, especially playing for Shamrock Rovers. Getting getting that real to Rovers is that the kicking his career back on big time he could play there you could play him you can also play him up front or play him on the wing but as you said no he's, he, he's best I believe from watching him as that top of the diamond or your number 10 position uh, of because that's the way kind of Rovers play they play in kind of like a diamond or else they have two sitters and one uh, like as a number 10 and they have two wide players and one striker so it, it would be it would be an ideal place if, but I think you'll go with McGoldrick there because holding the the physical side of it as well. Yeah, but he's technical too, McGoldrick. He, he's and playing quite good for what for Sheffield Sheffield United this this season. Twelve goals and three assists. So the, there is a system as well. So there could be the four four two formation where he plays McGuire and McGoldrick up there, and then the, the four the four in the midfield, and then obviously the wing backs keep pushing up as well for the goals. Yeah, well, from from their point of view, I mean, I'm not really too worried about. I mean, I mean, they've three players that are their record top goals, goal scorers with two goals: Chipolina, Gosling, and Liam Walker. Um, who have you know the three of them never really heard of. Um, 
the only player I've, I've heard it from was um, Castorino that used that plays for Lincoln Red Red Imps. He played against Celtic back about three years ago in the campaign. Oh, he's a record uh, appearance holder, isn't he? Yeah. That's the one. He's he scored now the the pitch they're playing in. Obviously, it's an artificial pitch, so. What I'd recommend you were saying the likes of Jack Bourne playing the diamond. Take the shots, take the shots. Like the ball's gonna bounce. Yeah, no, it was just an idea, Brian. I don't think he'll actually start, but I, I wouldn't be against him coming on. But sorry, go on. So that it will be. A, it's it's a big pitch. <laughs> it's a small it's a small stadium, but we'll have the fans there to back us anyway. One hundred percent. Do you think the pitch is going to be a real big issue, or do you think people are just making up? You know, just just making up ideas in their head that oh, it could be this and it could be that. I mean. Not necessarily, to be honest with you. Like, the ball yeah. bounces differently, yeah. It's hard on the knees, yeah. But, most, you know, your fo- professional footballers should be able to deal with these Exactly, things. like most of the professional footballers, when the weather's bad in like England and so, where they're playing, they're, they have to play on artificial pitches to train. So, I'd say they're used to it as well, playing on them artificial pitches. The ball will bounce, but this pitch has been UEFA ranked, UEFA proved. So, I should have no problem playing on this pitch. Yeah, well, like, like even today at training, they, were, they went over to the artificial pitch and they were doing work on it. So they'll be, you know, they'll be training on it all this week, getting getting used to it. You know, so I don't, I don't, I just don't see it being an issue. I think we should be comf- comfortably beating these. That's just my my take on it. I do, th- I do believe that we should be beating these, and uh, and comfortably too. I I don't see why. <sighs> We should, you know, we should, we should, we shouldn't even be nervous about this. I know, I know, we haven't scored a lot of goals over the last year, but it's a new era, new, new, uh, new manager. You know, there's a new aura about the place. There's a, there's not this, you know, bitter dinosaur hanging around. If you, if you say anything to him, he'll bite your head off type of thing. You know, Mick, like I interviewed Mick last week. He sat down and had a chat. And was actually it was more of a chat than an interview. We sat down and you know. If you if you're fair with him, he's fair with you, and that that's what I what I got from him. And I I do believe that he's going to give the players the lift they need. And I think some players like Hendrick or Harry Arthur's or something like that. I think they will really kick on by by being around him. I think this I think time with Arthur, I think is definitely with this what happened in the previous last year. But I think Arthur's a fantastic player. Obviously, he's doing well at Cardiff. Great great player when he was at Bournemouth. I know he's on loan. At Cardiff, but what fans would want like to see most is getting the string passes together, getting the passes from the side. None of this long ball over the top. Do you want to see them, the midfield being confidence? Yes and no. I mean, if the long, if if the long ball's working and we're scoring and it's effective, as he said himself. I mean, you, you know, I can't complain if you're winning games. You know what I mean? If you, if 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 you remember and you know anyone who's watching when. We went and played Wales away when McLean scored. I mean, that was one of the worst performances I ever seen. But does anyone ever go back and say, "Oh, we played so bad"? No, they go. Do you remember McLean's goal? And do you remember how good Shane Duffy was that night? It was an offensive performance. He done quite well that night. Like obviously, it was like a one striker up top. Daryl Murphy played well up there. But it is. It's all about stringing the passes. And if it, if it does work over the top for us, happy days. Especially with that pitch, like. The way it is. Yeah. No, and, and look, I'm, I'm not. I'm not discrediting what you're saying in regards to passing the ball on the ground. And I just say, if we have to go long, go long. And if we have to play, you know, pass, 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 we should be good enough to do that. Now we've Premier League players in there, and mix, mix. I know Mick hasn't had a lot of time before to get to know the squad, but he's getting a week now to to, to get them in. And you know, as I said, from looking at them, there's a buzz about them. You know, well, I'm, I'm even actually... walking out of training today when uh, I was talking to Darren Randolph and Seamus came up, tipped me. He was like, "Hello," and he was in a much better form because I've watched him on interviews with say, off the ball and stuff like that. And it just seems really like oh, I don't want to deal with 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 you and don't deal with the media type of thing. Um, but today he was like, oh, "All right, how are you? How's things?" And then he was off the train, and, and the majority of the players were coming out and actually saying hello. But as normally, they just keep their head down, and walk. They wouldn't say anything. So there is. A good positive atmosphere around the camp, which I'm glad to see. Exactly, especially from Randolph's point of view. R- Randolph's a senior figure in Irish football now. Obviously, our number one keeper at the moment. Like to get the calm and confidence from him that for new players coming into the squad, it's a massive step for them. Definitely a massive step. So we'll ensure the players that are starting or who are coming off the bench. Okay, let's let's earn this jersey. You've been picked. And play the football the way it should be played. Get the result. Yeah. Um, so the last time we played them, 
was in October 14th and we won 7-0. Yeah, so we played them in the second game of the 2016 European qualification. So we beat them 7-0. It was a Saturday. It was a sunny day in Dublin. We had a goal scorer back then. We did have a goal scorer. His name was Robbie Kane. Nice hat trick as well. Broke records as well that day. Put past Slatan as the records. Goal scorer in, um, for country. Was that by being active or just... In all, like, inactive friendlies, um, qualification, competition. Take that Zlatan, anyway. So he and was he was a, still better than the LA Galaxy as well. True, true. Good conversions there as well with Landon Donovan, as you would know quite yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Lando. But uh, <laughs> yeah, then, then McLean doubled uh, Wezo and then an OG. But that, again, we haven't really looked at maybe McLean getting in on this game. And you know the way players are kind of funny again about teams that they scored against he scored twice against these so he might have in his head you know that he'll want to get on the score sheet he'll also want to prove that uh, to Mick that he's good enough to get into this team and the fact that Martin O'Neill always seemed to get the best out of McLean and not many other managers after that really did but um, it'd be interesting because McLean's quite disciplined you look at the managers that have signed him like like uh, Tony Pulis Signed him at West Brom and brought him back to the Premier League and made, like really used him effectively. I know the last season he was wasn't getting much of a look in, but before that he was, and, and that's and that's when he was doing well for us. Regards to McLean, I think at the last end of last season when West Brom were pushing to stay up, which unfortunately they didn't stay up. They, Darren Moore got a lot out of him. Got a oh, lot he of did, him, yeah, yeah. Tracking back wise, I don't know for the international. Even against United, I remember they beat they beat United, didn't they? Even Spurs when they beat Spurs in the Hornthorns at that time, but. I think McLean has to stamp, stamp his place. Like it's a new manager, it's a new era. He wants to get the best out. He has to push him up. It was regards to that Gibraltar game. Kane, uh, McLean was playing more of a striker role when it came towards the fifth goal went in when we were home and dry. The leg, their legs were just gone. So as I was touching back to previously, the fitness levels are going to be a massive plus for us there. And I think McLean can run right against them on the wing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Now, our other game was in the, in the Algarve, and we bet the 4 0. Robbie Keane with two, Sawyer Christie with the other, and Shane Long with the last goal. So, our records, we essentially have, you know, 11 nil on, on aggregate, is, you could call it. But we have a great record against them. But if you're going for a prediction for to, to, to wrap it up, um, a prediction. Score prediction? Score prediction, I'd say 4 0 Ireland. I think McGoldrick could um, do a massive statement there, physical, pace wise. I said the wings could be a massive statement. It could be a midfielder, attacking midfielder, banging a goal in. But we should definitely be pushing pushing for the corners and so physical in the area with Duffy as well. I'd, I'd be going for 4 0. Yeah, well, it's not a bad show. I'm going to say um, 3 0. And I'd like to get Shawnee McGuire too off the mark and McAldrick the other so going for 3 nil for Ireland just comfortable nice handy win 3 nil. no messing about or, or anything like that just a bit of confidence going into the Georgia game and then we can focus on them exactly let us know your thoughts in the comments in regards to what you think the score prediction would be and we will speak to you all soon thank you very much for watching